to Apps Revealed, how mobile apps can work with your business. I'm so excited that you've come to join us today on this webinar. I'm Marguerite Insko, and I'm partnered here with Andrew to share with you what we have found that's really exciting about apps when it comes to growing a business, growing your clientele, and uh, in all different types of industries. And so we're going to give you some inside uh, perspectives both technically and in a marketing sense, and that's the plan. Um, and I think Andrew needs to take a moment and say hi himself, and then we'll talk a little bit about where we're coming from business-wise. Hi, well, hello everybody. I'm Andrew Osborne, and uh, I'm working here with uh, Marguerite. I work for Clark Incorporated. Um, we produce apps, and we also do uh, websites and print all kinds of marketing, but today it's all about the apps. <laughs> Yeah, we've teamed up together because we have very complementary types of businesses. My strength is in uh, inbound marketing, which is making your helping your website actually generate revenue for your business through uh, lead generation and lead nurturing. And so it's sort of the the inner workings of a website that uh, Clark Incorporated can create or update as needed for clients. So we, were, we are doing a webinar series together and this is just one of them uh, and we are focusing right now on mobile apps. Was there anything you wanted to add before we go into the uh, agenda? Well, one way people kind of think of it, I think it's kind of like you're the strategy and we're the uh, actual implementation of a lot of this stuff. you think that's apt? <laughs> I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah. All right, so on into the agenda. Well, we're going to talk about what exactly is an app. Some people get confused between app and mobile website. We'll talk about that, hopefully clarify any confusion people may have. We'll look at uh, is there a reason to believe that customers even care about apps. We'll get some numbers and we'll take a look, see what we can find out there, and talk about what types of apps are out there. So different kinds, not all apps are built the same way. So we'll go through that and then we'll look at who are apps for. You, know, you don't want to build an app for just any customer to say you really want to know who your audience is and who would respond best to apps versus some other forms of marketing. And then we'll take a look at some examples. We'll look at examples for each different type of app. And then we'll also look at examples of how apps may help um, the actual businesses of our viewers. We've uh, compiled a list of recommendations and maybe give you some ideas. Yeah, and I see a couple more people just joined, so that's great because uh, Andrew and I prepared for you, so we're really glad that you're here. It means a lot to us. Okay, I love the agenda. What is an app? <laughs> <laughs> well, technically speaking, an app is just a program that runs on a mobile device such as a phone or a tablet. However, practically speaking, which is probably more important, it's a great way of delivering content to an established customer base. I talked before, it's not to say just customers, but the real key there is an established base. And the question a lot of people ask is, I already have a mobile website. Does that mean I'm good? If I've got a mobile website, mobile marketing is taken care of. Well, not necessarily. I mean, mobile websites are very important today, but they don't do everything. Uh, websites and mobile apps attract users with very different mindsets and users expect very different experiences from them. Yeah, you're exactly right. A mobile app could be totally divergent from what is on the website. It doesn't have to mirror each other, and it fulfills a different purpose in the marketing. And, and what people may not know statistically is that on mobile devices, people are moving, spending more time on apps than they are on the, the website or internet-based type of program, so the browser and so forth. So mobile website is very important. You know, we're doing research, we're reading the blog, but when I go use an app, there's very often a completely different functionality behind that, and you're going to see that very clearly in the examples that we have here. Now we'll look at the big question, do customers even care? You know, it can be all fancy and flashy and look wonderful, but if your customers don't care, does it really help you? Well, in a Forbes study of over 500 senior level business executives, 68% of those surveyed have made more than $1,000 of business purchases using mobile in the past six months. And 41% said that mobile apps make them more likely to buy or engage. That's in addition to mobile websites. In addition to or separate from, apps specifically make them more likely. 
and 26% said even if they already like a brand or product, they are less likely to engage with them without a mobile app. And this is a survey of business executives, but I would guess that numbers might be even higher for retail uh, B2C you know, general customers and not just businesses. I'd say it's even more for that. Yeah, you know, and, and this is also reporting apps that are really people are finding valuable, that are finding useful. I mean, anybody could get an app made and, ah, it didn't work out, you know, I, uh, nobody's really downloading it or it doesn't make a difference for the people that I've downloaded. And it does have everything to do with your customer base and how you're uh, helping them make their life more enjoyable, make them better at what they do. Uh, I think about an app, this is just like two years ago, uh, an app that you could get if you're a speaker. And so you go visit someone at a speaking event, and they're like, okay, download my app, you know, and you tell them, like, oh, this is so cool, because it was just so new and exciting. And I downloaded the app once, I looked at it once, and then, like, a year later, I deleted it, because all it was was just a, a background about the speaker and their latest stuff on Twitter and things like that. And it just, it, that wasn't meaningful. It was all about that person. It was all about that company. It wasn't about me. And that's what people really want out of apps these days. And that's how it leads to this engagement and eventually purpose, purchases if that's not the direct purpose. Yeah, you want it to be something useful for them. Now, basic types of apps, they can generally be divided into three types. You have native apps. Native apps are made specifically for the device they're going to be used on. They're coded in case of Apple devices specifically for iOS, in case of Android devices specifically for the Android operating system or for Windows uh, Mobile, specifically for Windows, that kind of thing. It's a generally pretty expensive option, actually the most expensive of the three we're going to talk about, but it allows you to do almost anything you can think of with the app. It takes full advantage of the processing capabilities and advanced features of the device. Uh, with a native app, you can do anything that it's the computer, the tablet phone is physically capable of doing, you can do it with a native app. There really aren't any limits. With web apps, they are essentially mobile websites in terms of the technical functionality behind the scenes. You've got the HTML, CSS code, same as you would on a website. Just instead of being on a server that you'd pay for hosting, and, and the customers would access it through a web browser like an Explorer or Chrome or Firefox, instead of that, the content is packaged in what's called an app wrapper, and it's downloaded through the app store. So instead of going to www.webaddressheer.com, they instead go to the app store, search for the business name, and download it that way. They offer most of the same limitations that a website does. You're not going to have to be really tap in the processor. You're not going to be getting into the using the user's camera and accelerometer and that kind of thing but they're much, much cheaper than native apps, kind of a budget solution. And we're going to show a good example of that, so that's going to be pretty helpful. All right, we'll have examples for all three of these that we'll show you later, and we'll explain a bit more in depth. But then there are digital publishing apps. These are kind of a middle ground between the native apps and the web apps. They're made specifically for doing publications, things like magazines, newsletters, enhanced brochures, that kind of thing. They, take, they have a lot of the capabilities that a native app can have that web apps can't, but they're much more inexpensive than native apps. They're kind of like you get some of the extra features with some of the costs, middle of the world option. Uh, it's particularly useful if you already do your print publications in InDesign. A lot of that work can be reused when the app is made, which can sometimes cut costs even further. Is there anything okay. you want to add, Marguerite? No, I think that it's a great breakdown. Uh, I don't know if you want to speak to uh, a little, just a little bit. You know, you said a little bit about cost, but timeline or level of effort putting these together. Uh, and, well, you know, I think that um, you'll cover that a little bit more when we look at the examples, right? Well, somewhat. I, mean, I will just take a few some idea. An app is a significant investment. Uh, the cost is generally measured in thousands of dollars. You're probably not going to get even a web app for probably less than 1000 So you're talking a significant investment. You should be prepared for that. But with significant investment can come significant returns. And we'll go through more in the, of how these can be used. 
Okay, great. Now, who are they for? A major component is existing customers. These often respond best to apps. They're already familiar with you. They already care about your company. It takes effort for them to go find the app, download it, install it, not even just remember it's even there until you use it. And there are things you can do to help remind people. Uh, you can use what's called push notifications. It's kind of like a text message sent to everybody who has your app installed, things like that. But people, if they don't already have reason to care, an app is a fair bit of effort for them. So people who know nothing about you likely won't bother. Existing customers, though, really respond great to apps, especially make them much more likely to buy and reorder and do better. And then another great group is prospective clients. If a prospect's already familiar with you and somewhat interested, a well-designed app can really impress and really help to close the deal and really turn them from just a prospect to a full-on client, especially if they can see value in the app. But after they become a client, they'll keep using it and earn extra value from it. That can be really appealing. And this is all about the strategy behind the app, why you want to build it, and what's your goal for using it. And if it's creating a longer lifetime value of existing customers, it can make a lot of sense. Or if it's because we want to increase the exposure of our business. Uh, and in like, for example, existing customers, uh, we're going to look at a university app. All it's designed to do is keep people enjoying their university and their experience of it. And that's the way you can make more money because people stay enrolled longer. Whereas prospective clients can be pulled in by something really nifty or cute or fun or whatever the purpose is that we want to have for that app. And then the more they enjoy that app, the more that they want to explore what else the business has to offer. So uh, two really good examples there for these two different reasons. And they can even merge together a little bit. I think we'll see that here shortly. Yeah. So we're ready to jump in and actually look at some practical examples of uh, apps in action. Let's do it. All right, give me just a moment to pull up my iPad screen on the computer. Uh, get over here. All right. Well, first off, let's look at some examples of the native app category. These are ones that have a full feature set that really tap into the power of the device they're running on. First one I have here is Legal and Copyright Small Business Toolkit. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful there, but. Uh, hang on just a second. Let me skip the login. All right. This is made by a company called DocStock, and it um, was written specifically with iPhone and iPads in mind. It is a company that offers online courses for small business. They have a number of apps that they've done, uh, each focusing on a different subject. Uh, giving samples what they teach on a variety of subjects, this one particular covering legal and copyright issues. You can see the content is nicely broken down into chapters with associated resources. And one thing I really like, that's probably one of the reasons they went with a native app on this, is that it tracks what you've done. You see here's 0 of 39 videos watched. There's a progress bar that I believe fills in as you complete assignments. Things like, like saving progress and remembering what a user has done at previous times they've opened the app is the kind of thing that most of the time can only be done in a native app. Uh, they're using this app kind of like a free trial, so it's giving people a sample of what their full course line offers. I really, really like this app. It makes so much sense, uh, I guess, being a business owner myself, I think these ways. It's, it's, it's delivering content and information in a way that fits the generations that it's targeting. Uh, it's content heavy, it's content rich, really useful stuff, and you don't even have to be a member yet. And it's just amazing that you get to access all of this. And I think what's interesting is this is how much marketing has changed in the last two to three years. It, it was um, just a few years ago, here's all this great content, and now if you want to see more of it, like I'll show you half the document, if you want to download the whole one, you have to subscribe. Or we're going to just give you a taste, and then if you like that, go ahead and sign up. Here they're giving you so much information that in, in a positive experience with them, that it becomes like part of your life. And then it's, well, of course I need to sign up for DocStock. I've been using them for six months, and I, now I have some really specialized needs. I need more depth of information. I want to educate my employees and, and get them going the right direction. So what they've become is 
just a value-added part of life, and the decision to sign up for $10 a month isn't hard at all. It just makes perfect sense. And, and so they are definitely cutting edge in their thoughts about the marketing process because that's what people want these days virtually. Uh, this being a society here in America where we're very focused on what do I want right now for me that I can get immediately. And then I think later about what this business or company can do for me. So I love this example and I'm very excited to have downloaded it. <laughs> Enjoy the video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one we're looking at is one from Frank and Oak. Frank Oak is going to have a high-end menswear store. And for their app, they even put a number of features for regular customers. Um, you know, the first one we looked at was kind of more for, I guess, prospective clients, more so than current customers. Although I'm sure current customers like use a, a good bit for the free trial part. But Frank and Oak is really all about the current customers. They have people sign up to uh, ways to view the catalog and all. It's kind of a not not really exclusive, but it could be a high end atmosphere. And right open you see the advertising their magazine at slash news at the edit, they call it. Um you see it's kind of like we'd have a digital publishing app where it's it could have been a print catalog and they may actually have a print version, but they make a version embedded in the app for easy browsing on a tablet. It's laid out into here in the landscape mode. Because I have the tablet turned that way. I don't know. Yeah, it adapts if I turn tell so it's tapping into the accelerometer to tell which way the app's rotated. That's the kind of thing that native apps tend to do well. Uh, and you see, they didn't go just for digital publishing app, though, because they have so much other stuff in here. They've got their shop in here. they got their blog. They're a members club. They share and earn locations. All stuff off the top. It really provides a full experience that mimics the website but expands on it specifically for mobile users in a way that's much easier to use on their device. I really like their uh, product shots. Can you show them one of those, kind of how you can, uh, yeah, pick a, a shirt, any shirt, right? Yeah, for some reason it's not really uh, downloading right now. Oh, is it going kind of slow? But it has like yeah. these multiple images of close up, far away. You know, what is it? What a good e-commerce store does anyway. But it's it's very easy to to do right here in this app. Now, here's what I love about Frank and Oak. That they these guys are smart. When you visit the website, when you visit the app, you do not go immediately to a catalog. Instead, they say, "This is who we are. This is who we sell to, and this is our vision. Are you interested? Go ahead and sign up." Now, on the website, from what I could see, and, and maybe if I poked, I poked it on quite a bit, so maybe I missed it, but on the website, you can't visit their catalog until you register or log in with Facebook or give them your email. Now, the reason why they do that is because data has come out um, from Kissmetric saying in their, all their e-commerce sites that they work with, people are more likely to close a deal when they put stuff in a shopping cart if they don't have to register, if they don't have to put in their email address. That's a big gap. If, they, if that's collected earlier and all of that's in place, by the time they get to their, you know, ready to check out from their um, shopping cart, it, it, the conversion rate is much higher. And of course, the opportunity to send the push notifications that are here in this app that they do send, and the GPS, uh, uh, no, well, not notifications, but the, it, it can notice where the person is and tell them when they're close by to a retail location. Yes. So uh, now with the app, I did notice you were not required to register. It, it offers that up front, or you can skip it. So that is a little different from the website. But the, this was very well done. It makes you feel very special to be a part of this store. And I can definitely see that uh, they get a higher number of sales for people who visit their website than a more traditional or an older uh, type of model for e-commerce. Yep. Well, let's move from the native apps into web app uh, examples. Here we're going to have Randolph College here in Lynchburg. They have an app. And I think this was made largely with iPhones in mind. It's a little bit stretched out on the iPad. But as an example of a uh, web app, it's not as flashy as the native app. Some of that's the design. Uh, they probably could have spent a bit more time and care on that. But as core, this app is like a news feed with a bunch of accordion menus that expand out into categories and then the articles and further down to the full text of the articles. 
So it's simple, but it buys a lot of information in a small space. And this is an app that pulls information from the internet to constantly stay up to date. Doesn't need a app update to go through Apple or anything that can sometimes take a certain amount of time. What they're probably doing is going on to uh, just like we would update a web page by using the same techniques to keep this up to date to always have the latest news and probably even have a shared resource for their website and the app to both pull from and both stay up to date. Uh, I do wonder if maybe the design prevents it from being as good a marketing tool as it could be. This has been very basic, but this was probably very inexpensive for them as well. I like the concept and then their ability to take it further I think would definitely have some significant returns. Uh, Every college student is on their phone. Every college student will absolutely 100% avoid any website that isn't mobile friendly, and that's if they have to go there. They are very pro app. And like I mentioned earlier, every student that's really involved with their school, with uh, events, using their um, cafeterias, uh, staying up on current events and news. I mean, I remember when I was in college, of course, there wasn't even smartphones around then. And, I, and then I had to go to the website, and, and I never bothered to do that. And there was lots of stuff on there that I missed. It just wasn't the mentality that we had. And here, we can actively engage people while they're walking around on campus, even if it went as far as push notifications, which I know we can't do with this with a web app. But conceptually, when people love their school and they stay there all four years, that's where they make the money, much less all the other stuff like eating at the cafeterias and participating in sports events, which is other forms of revenue. Right. Now, a little bit of a uh, more flashy web app, still a web app, not a native app, but what most Southwest Grill has done. This is another one that they really focus on for the phone, I think. You can see I've actually blown it up extra large for the iPad screen. So it's meant to design intentionally to suit a small screen like a phone. It gives you on, your get on the go. And this app has one major purpose, order now. You see that? That's like the one big button. you got another side menu up here in the upper left corner, but it's really about the ordering. And it uses location services to identify where the user is, uh, then find the store quickly. When you select the store, you see it's got map right to it. You've got a, let me uh, find my mouse cursor. you got a call now button. you got a button just for directions. You also got to view the menu. And the thing is they didn't just do a menu. As you can go in through, select and stuff, and then you can actually order. You can put in the custom stuff you want on your burrito or whatever else you're ordering and add it to the cart and save favorite orders, go ahead and place the order. And then when you get to the store, all you have to do is go right to the end of the line, say I'm here to pick up the app order and just pay and you have the food handed right to you. Actually, I think you even pay from inside the app. So you just hand the food right to you, skip the line. You know, and that's what the Moe's realized. They had a capacity problem that was keeping them from making as much money as they could because everybody wants to eat pretty much at the same time. And if there's anything that people dislike more and more these days is standing in line and waiting. And when you're hungry, it's even harder. And people will by default, because I know we've all done it, we go to some place to eat because we know we're going to get the food there the fastest. And so folks that like Moe's, and they've had the app, and they're super hungry, and they're with their friends, and they're like, dude, like, we need to get some lunch. Um, well, I'm not going to go stand in that line. Well, just go on the way. I'm going to order it on my phone. It, it complements that uh, mentality very well in the way that consumers like to work. So Moe's is very smart. It's not, this is not an app that's going to be advertising how good their food is. It's an app that makes their customer base come back again and again, and it eliminates the friction points, which uh, minimize your ability to generate revenue. So, uh, love it. Yeah, it's very much a current customer type targeted app. Now, I was looking at some digital publishing app examples. Now, here's one's for the Virginia Music Educator Association. Uh, hang on, let me go back to the front page here. Um, now, Virginia Music Educators Association has been a client of Cloud Incorporated for a while as a print customer. They would uh, three times a year put out this large, usually 60-ish page, eight and a half by 11 newsletter. It's really almost like a magazine, and the print and the postage costs were hitting them really hard. 
So they try to move their print publication to a tablet publication to save money. Now, since saving money was the primary goal, the app isn't as feature-rich as it could be. Uh, but even with a tight budget, it still offers a lot of advanced functionality. Uh, things like clickable links. Uh, each of these uh, email addresses on the side, click it, media opens up quickly, maybe email the person. You got links straight to the articles and the table of contents. Plenty of room keeps scrolling, scrolling. You don't have to worry about page count, anything like that. More quick links they can offer to outside resources. Web links go straight up, opening in the browser. All very nice, kind of slick package. And something that advertisers really love is you have the ads themselves linked straight to the advertisers' websites. So they've been able to sell more advertisers on that idea, knowing that there's less barrier of entry to people responding to the ads and that kind of thing. And we've even, Dr. So much we took out our own ad in there, and something else we did is even embedded video. We've done embedded video to enhance their articles, advertisers to embed video to enhance their ads, and all this was actually costing them significantly less. I think it was on the order of about 40% less than what they were paying for the print and mailed version that's arguably not as nice. Uh, previous issues have even featured things like one-click event scheduling to add to users' Google Calendar. Like they do a conference once a year, and then the, the schedule's in the app, and they see a session that they want, they just click that one button, and it's added to their Google Calendar to remind them when they're at the event, hey, you want to view this session coming up in 15 minutes. You know, associations have that challenge of really, really managing their budget, keeping it tight, and they have to keep it low, but they really want to get the word out. I mean, that's the whole point of their existence is to spread, you know, the beauty and the joy uh, and uh, behind music uh, in terms of uh, musical instruments and, and uh, being classically trained here in the state of Virginia throughout schools and so forth. Um, and the ability to push this out electronically in a form that people really enjoy, and they have these enhancing experiences where if it was just a print document, the likelihood of them taking that ad in the print document and then going to the website is much lower than if they could just click on it right there. And I love how you can get the additional data of uh, readers, whereas when you print something and you ship it out, you don't know who's reading what and how much is being read and viewed. So this provides really great feedback for analytics to help um, provide more value for future publications. Now, if you want to see a better example of what is possible with a big enough budget on digital publishing, remember VMA, they want to cut costs. But if you really want to wow people, University of Notre Dame has made a really amazing wow factor app. It got a lot of publications loaded into one app. I want to show you the interactive yearbook um, for our purposes here. So when it first opens up, you've got this really nice video. It's really they hype up the viewer and get them in the sports mood. And they've got a tap to skip in the lower left. I'm not going to go through all of it. But then they've just got every page packed with features. Uh, you can see right here, they've got other ways to follow the Fighting Irish. They've got links to the Twitter feed, Facebook page, Instagram. And all this you can click on and it opens up, but doesn't leave the app. You can go in, look at what you want to look at and go right back to the app. And they've got a table of contents here. It's a big app. There's a ton of stuff can be shown. I highly recommend uh, people give it a download and look around if they want ideas. It's a free app. But I want to take you around the stadium section here. If we go to the section of Notre Dame Stadium, there's a lot of stuff in here that's really impressive. You see they've got this 3D rendering animation showing the stadium, kind of showing what they have available. It's probably really good for uh, hyping up potential students while I'm like, hey, I want to go here. You can see on all these, they got tap names to learn about the five coaching legends. You can tap on one, it gives you information about that person, that some of their history and photos of memorial statues that are on the grounds. To keep going, you see the seating chart shows you again that rendering and then very easily see how the seating's done. If you want to buy tickets, you can plan it's like, where do you want to go? And you see you got little animated uh, additions and just little very nice touches make the whole thing a really amazing experience. And something if I go a 
bit further on. Here we go. This one I really love. And I wish you could see what I was doing. I'm holding the tablet and just turning it around. It's a 360 degree panorama, giving people a view into the behind the scenes locker rooms. So they've got several of these throughout the app uh, showing various parts on campus. You know, who needs to fly out for an in-campus tour? You can just take, download the app and walk around with your iPad and see what everything's like right from within the app. That's a really amazing thing they did. And then also using the uh, accelerometer since the movement of the app, they got this timeline that uses parallax scrolling to scroll the background different from the foreground. That as I'm moving it, I don't know if it's showing on the stream too well, but it's providing like 3D effect to even the still photos. And they've done some amazing stuff here. And each of these on the timeline, I can click it and it gets more information about that year at that point in time. As I could go on and on. They've got tons of great stuff. This is a wonderful idea app. If you just want ideas of what you can do, you can download this app and just take a look through. You know, this is clearly a huge investment into this type of app, uh, and they have the money to do that, but they recognize the fact that it is their fans that make them what they are today. It's all about fan base, and the more you feed your fans, the bigger they get. And this is just like power feeding right here, this kind of information. It makes people who are sort of fans, even bigger fans, and bigger fans, even bigger fans, because it's just so much history as we're going through right here, but it's also so much um, current events information. And then you can actually just get like inside of the experience and, and look at the locker room where, you know, you wouldn't be able to do that if you went to a game. But you can go to a game and you can look at the locker room on your iPad. <laughs> And so you feel like you get this full uh, experience. Um, I love it. It's just this is uh, really fun to just look at, to be honest, even though I'm not a football fan. Hopefully no one holds that against you, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know uh, what? We are going to start looking at some uh, websites and discuss app ideas, right? Yeah. Is that what we do next? And I know yeah. that, Calvin, we have you up first. And I guess uh, Andrew's going to switch to your website. I thought, if, if Calvin, if you're okay with your audio and microphone on your end, maybe you could just uh, share with us for a minute a little bit about why an app might be of interest to specially exterminating and any particular questions that you would like for us to answer. And then uh, Andrew and I will add to that. And if the microphone doesn't work too well, you're always welcome to type in some stuff there on your chat. Yeah, a bit of background, I don't know if you know Mark Greek. Uh, Calvin's actually talked to us before about an app idea, and I know it was put on hold for a little while. I don't know if uh, you want to talk about that idea, Calvin, or if you have any other ideas you want to talk about, or just hear our own thoughts about it. I had fun moving around the website here. These are some nice pictures. I like the website. Well, Calvin, if you have any questions, feel free to pop it in there on the chat, and uh, we'll go ahead and answer them for you, or if you have any thoughts that you would like for us to consider. So why don't you tell us what your the original idea then was, Andrew, and then I'll, and if you have any more, add on to it, and I can add my own, actually. Well, the original idea was something uh, that people could have on their phone as a reference. They could identify uh, household pests they found. You see this weird bug, you don't know what it is. They figure out what this thing is, you know, what it can do, how dangerous is it, and you know, get get information. And while they're looking up the bug and have information, have right there one click to call, especially exterminating, to come get rid of it, come take care of it for you. So really, I guess probably to um, it, it fit with current customers, I suppose, if it, anything comes back, but also probably prospective customers. I don't know if people. You know, they would just search for an exterminator app and download it if they've never heard especially exterminating. But it would really decrease the barriers to entry, I guess. Um, it would immediately tell them what the thing is, they know what it is, they know what they've got to do, and just come take care of it. I had uh, an idea in addition to that where, because uh, I, I like that concept, I think it's really good, a little bit more educational pieces could be added. So like for managing pests in general, not only trying to find an image of 
a uh, type of bug on there so you can you know recognize what it is so then you can call the extermination company to do something about it but we could also talk about more common pests that we don't always call the extermination or exterminator for uh, it could be like gnats because you're fruit flies or fruit flies that's what I'm experiencing right now because it's summertime it could be cockroaches you know there's a lot of things that homeowners can do around the house to help either mitigate the problem or eliminate it from happening just through good practices. And that kind of information could be useful as action steps and then knowing when to call a professional. And so I, I even came up with an idea of an app name. Now I didn't research this so it doesn't count. I could be totally wrong. But it could be so called something like bug off. And you know, and you're a homeowner and you're you're recognizing you've got this type of spider or you're seeing more cockroaches than normal, like what's going on with that? And I look up, I want to get these bugs off of me or out of my house, and you can look up on the app to see what are some good steps that can be done right then and when to know you have a real issue and call a professional. And I even thought of one thing too while you were talking, Angie, this might be going a really long way, because uh, I know this is a local business, so it's important, people can download this app across the country, but for them this is going to be relevant to do business locally. But I thought it would be really cool if they had in their app the ability to take a picture of the pest and then get that sent uh, to them, uh, especially exterminating, and especially exterminating can reach out to them either back through chat or some other form of feedback communication and let them know what they're seeing. Yeah, I think it's so good, sound like some good ideas. I see what they have here this termite awareness week, you know, and or termite breakdown of how to identify. That's the kind of thing the kind of content that I think a lot of people would find very useful in an app. Yeah. Cool. Well, I don't think we've had any questions from Calvin yet, but, you know, uh, pop up later. If, if Let us know, Calvin, if, if you get a chance to pop in later. Uh, but those were some high-level ideas that we had for you there, and I hope you found that interesting. And let me see. Are we ready to move on to the next one, Andrew? Yeah, I think so, Calvin. If you do get a mic working or think of anything, just go ahead and uh, you know chime in, and we can uh, go back if you need to. All right, we've got Conrad up next, and uh, I don't know if you are connected with this audio-wise, Conrad. So, like Calvin, feel free to type in here with your chat any questions that you have or comments that you would like to make. Uh, I think a good way to start off is to say Andrew and I thought the website was pretty cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, Conrad, if you are able to, uh, you know, talk or type in chat, I'd love to hear a bit more from you about what you're thinking of, what you, what your interest is in an app. I've got some thoughts of my own, but I'd love to hear from you what uh, your plan is. Hey, <clears throat> hey, guys, this is Conrad. Can you hear me? I'm not sure if I'm dialed yeah. in. Yeah. Um, well, we just recently launched the site, and we were in the predicament that you had mentioned or described early at the beginning of the webinar. Our previous site was completely non-mobile enabled or accessible, um, and we're in the midst of doing a lot of recruiting, and uh, a lot of the people that we're looking to recruit are younger, and, and so uh, we feel like we've really finally brought our website and in a way, the company into the 21st century. Um, the uh, the website now is very uh, uh, tablet and, in fact, <clears throat> a smartphone friendly, almost to the point where it's easier to navigate our site <clears throat> on a, on a mobile device rather than a, tip, a traditional laptop. Um, yeah, my first thought I when I saw this, this almost looks like an app design, <laughs> you know, with the interface and all. Mm hmm. And that's because what we do, we do clinical research. And so uh, when a new drug gets developed, <clears throat> our company is one that then runs it through human trials. And you, so you, uh, most of that work is done remotely at hospitals and medical centers and everywhere else. And so it's really important that uh, that work be able to get, gets done to be done and monitored um, uh, through mobile devices. Uh, so, and the reason that I was interested in this webinar was just thinking what's the next step now that we've got a mobile enabled website, <clears throat> are there specific apps that we might, that we should be considering or thinking about to make the experience even that more um, meaningful or beneficial to uh, patients, physicians, our own, our own project managers, that kind of thing. 
Well, my thoughts, I'll, I'm, I'm sorry, Marguerite. Oh, I was going to say, can I ask Conrad like a couple more questions because I want to make sure I understand really uh, who you're trying to target with the website in terms of the, the, um, the customers that you want to work with. And, and I could see you guys are, are doing studies and publishing them, which I can certainly see is very valuable for anybody in the medical community, especially in the areas that they specialize in and they want to stay up on the latest information uh, in reference to pharmaceuticals or other medical practices. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to add to that that maybe would help make sure I, I've got the correct understanding? <laughs> it, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a very good and very fair question. <clears throat> um, our primary audience would be um, decision makers at medical device or pharmaceutical companies. You know, those are typically the types of companies who develop either new compounds, new drugs, or new medical devices that then have to be tested. Um, you know, to make sure that, you know, that they're safe and that they do what they're intended to do and that kind of thing. So primarily, those are, those are the main, that's the main target audience for the website. Secondary target audience would be uh, the people who work like at the um, Duke Medical Center or the Mayo Clinic, the ones who, uh, the physicians and nurses who actually work with the patients when we're running a, a clinical trial. So if there's a new drug that's been developed for Alzheimer's, um, you know, it's the doctors and nurses at different medical facilities around the country or the world who are working with those Alzheimer's patients to make sure they take the new medicine on time when they should, that kind of thing. So, okay. So, so these so, so medical, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I interrupted you. I apologize. Go ahead and finish what you were saying. It's important. I was just going to say, so <clears throat> those uh, medical medical professionals are a second target audience for the website. Okay. Now, the, 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 the pharmaceutical companies, the medical devices and so forth, they're interested in reading your research to see, I'm assuming here, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, to see what other people are doing in the industry and also to understand the value that you can bring and the quality of your type of research that you produce so that they can hire you to help validate the work that they're doing. Correct, I'll, I'll, and specifically what they're really interested in, say it's a new um, uh, cancer drug, they'll want to know uh, how many can, how many oncology studies have we uh, have we done in the past. You know, do we understand what it takes to run an oncology study? So that kind of thing. And so we have all that information on the website because we know that that's uh, something that they're very interested in. They don't want a company that doesn't understand oncology to run uh, a clinical trial with a new cancer drug, obviously. Yeah. Neat. Well, that was really helpful. Thank you. I'm sure, Andrew, you had a question or a thought? Yeah. Um, I had an idea for an app. I was kind of operating on the assumption that a lot of people who are getting ready to work with you, hire you, probably like to track what you're doing for some time before starting a deep relationship. You know, they want to see that you're active, see what you're doing, see what you're up to. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a valid assumption, but... No, no it, yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, I was thinking it'd be an, an app could be a great way of keeping those kind of people up to date. You know, your website, I'm sure, is updated frequently with new stuff, but it appears to require people to keep coming back to see the latest. I was thinking an app that held the same information could use our push notifications to alert people when a new video or new article has been published. Uh, that probably helped them keep up to date without forgetting about you as they're reminded every time new content's published without ha them mm -hmm. having to go check. Okay, yep. Uh, yep. From a design standpoint, you know, I, I, it almost looks like an app design already with these nice large buttons and scrolling. It's like these stripes. I'd even keep maybe a similar design to it. Uh, Additional push notifications could really help, I think. Okay. You know, and I was thinking about that myself. Let me ask you, uh, Conrad. Um, I was scrolling through it a bit. I, I can't say that. I mean, I spent like about 10 minutes moving around, but I didn't see, maybe I missed it, a place to subscribe if you wanted to get, like via email, uh, notices for a particular area of, of research or anything like that. Is that, did I miss it or does that, is that there? You know, we have that um, on different areas of the website, but you're right, there's no like universal or uh, um, always present uh, sign up uh, page. And, and maybe, uh -huh. you know, may, maybe that's something we should, we should add to it. Yeah. 
Well, the because uh, I was thinking about what Andrew was saying with the push notifications, the same thing could be done via email. In the more uh, it can be specialized for you know the uh, categories of information, that makes it more mm -hmm. likely people are going to sign up. Because why would I want to get an email or a push notification on some area of med medicine that doesn't matter to me? So uh, making it you know categorized where they can subscribe or unsubscribe via email or push. And uh, and then over time, they're seeing that you know within six months or to a year, uh, they've seen a good maybe two or three articles from you guys. You know, that would definitely make a huge impact in their decision making uh, of, of who they want to hire because they already feel like they have a positive experience with you guys, and that will and give you guys a, data yeah. for your yeah. uh, leads. True. No, that, that's a good idea, and we would want to do it any push notification by therapeutic area because you're right. It wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't have much value for someone who works in um, cardiovascular health to get notifications about Alzheimer's. So, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah, good. Well, this is really neat. I haven't seen a website like this before, so very nice. Yeah, it really cool. stood out to me. <laughs> Great. All right, I think we have Paul up next. I don't know, I don't think he's on the call here, though, but he did register, so, and, and I did have some great ideas for him. So let's go ahead and talk about his website, World Builders Incorporated, and uh, see what we come up with. Well, I've got his website up here. You want me to go first? Or sure. do you want to go first? All right. Well, I'm looking at uh, what he has here, and hang on just a second. Pull this up. So I was looking at his site. I think I have a good example app for um, him to look at. It's called MassCore Living Spaces um, by MassCore Design Associates. And I think an app so this one could be a good strategy for them to take. You know, this place uh, is a builder, and they've got this publication they put out. I think it's a couple of times a year. Called they call Living Spaces. And it's got some really good features for people who are looking into building. And do construction. Um, you got floor plans here. You got uh, you can do windowing models that people can look all around to really look into and get a good idea of what their project could look like when finished. That kind of thing. They got have just full of this kind of thing. Kind of like a catalog, but it's kind of showing what can be done and kind of an idea book for anyone looking to build a home. I like that. That's neat how you can really set yourself apart with your product in a way that uh, can be useful to someone who's serious about investing into their real estate uh, building. Now, I know that, if you wanted to go back to the website, I know yeah. that World Builders uh, actually uh, focuses a lot on commercial properties. And there are certainly um, certain designs, I'm sure, with certain types of properties, multifamily or commercial, that they find are really, really successful. But I came up with some really, uh, a totally different idea for apps, which I think is why this kind of stuff is really fun. Um, yeah. It just shows the diversity about how what's available out there. Now, what I would want to know is definitely who is your biggest type of client, because the world of construction between multifamily and uh, insured loss, that's if your building you know, is damaged in a fire or something like that. Uh, to repair those, and then commercial being uh, larger buildings for business purposes. All of these are very different markets, and I would want to know, well, which one would you want to grow in? Because I think you could really just focus best on one at a time. And then come up with an app, let's say, uh, like uh, commercial properties. And you could probably do this with multifamily, too, if you're doing new development. So this is not rehabbing or up upgrading, but for new development. How about an app for each client as you're working through their commercial property for that six months that it takes to build it? Or, you know, it looks like it takes not very long to build it, but we all know that the whole process of getting a building in place can be, you have to think about years ahead of time. And if there's a template type of app that can be used and customized for each customer experience who's spending hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars with us, what a nice touch for them to monitor what's happening uh, with their property as things move along and to maybe even uh, do two-way communication. So that was a really fun idea. Now a whole other path that you could go to is we could come up with an app 
that would be much more uh, supportive and educational of certain individuals, let's say for um, the multifamily units, uh, for investors themselves uh, who really want to be able to kind of monitor what's happening with their property or get some guidance on some things to keep in mind when it comes to property maintenance. So they need to look at a property not just for the management of the property itself, so they're overseeing their property managers, but they also have to look at it from an asset standpoint because they're the one that's an investor and they want to make sure they're getting their money back. And an asset kind of has like a checklist, a data recording uh, perhaps feature to it uh, to help them move along and, and, and keep a bird's eye view that's really wise on their property is something that anybody could download uh, for their properties, but when it's time for them then to get improvements made on the property or maybe they're looking to start a whole new development uh, then World Builders is one that can come to mind because, hey, they've been using their app, you know, throughout the past year, and it's been bringing them value. Hmm. Okay, those are my two ideas. <laughs> yeah, and uh, something you can even do probably with my thoughts of that being like a showcase feature is, uh, let me switch back to the iPad view here, kind of like I was done with, the Notre Dame app, what you could do is have one central app, so you have one place to direct people, and also it would be cheaper to do one app than try to publish three separate, but then have several sub areas, uh, sub publications within the app to maybe have one for multifamily, one for commercial, one for insured loss, that kind of thing, so you still have that segmentation while keeping it to one app, therefore keeping the cost down, because doing one big app is going to be less expensive than three smaller apps, generally speaking. Yeah, great. I love that. That's great. Well, let's look at one more site in the last five minutes that we have here. This is really great timing. And this is an e-commerce site, uh, so it's nice to be able to reflect off of the e-commerce site that we saw earlier with Frank and Oak, and now we've got one that this is more of a boutique type of site. Uh, obviously, the company is not as large, but they have a very particular product line here, which is hand-painted uh, wine glasses, and these are custom-made, so you can see that people have their names painted on them, and it's very popular for weddings and so forth. And I know that Andrew and I have, uh, we both know Rebecca, the owner of this website, and we certainly talked about things that could be done to the website in general for improvement. Uh, but apps are still a way to go, even if, the type of app that was available with Franken Oak isn't ideal. And, and I'll give you a couple of reasons why. Franken Oak is about building a long-term relationship with their clients and being their go-to place for clothes. They have a higher um, value uh, for the customer lifetime than this example here or this boutique website would have. Because you only want to own so many hand-painted wine glasses. There's, there's just a certain point where you don't have to keep adding to your collection. Most people are pretty happy to have maybe two or three uh, around their house at most. Now, they are really good for gifts, too. These are actually wonderful customized gifts to give people. But still, there's only a certain point where you can give so many of them away. So the idea for this particular uh, commerce site would be to have um, – a lot of transactions with a, with a big, they have to grow their customer base, customer base uh, constantly as opposed to growing it and then maintaining and trying to get more business from them. Just This is just slightly different from Frank and Oak. So my thoughts for an app here would actually not be an online app to buy glassware. I don't think that that has any value. That if you really want an app that gets out there, catches people's attention from all around, then maybe something more along the lines of being help oriented. And let me see what I, a couple of my ideas that I had here. Uh, okay, so here's one that's really great. How about an app that helps you record special moments and dates for your friends and your family? And a place where you can put ideas, things that they say are like their favorite uh, types of gifts or things that they really enjoy. And what can be done even more importantly is that uh, this app, if content is produced to go with it, can send push notifications on articles and concepts, ideas for celebrating these certain life moments, but they do it in a timely manner. All of us, like last minute, totally forget it's somebody's birthday. Oh, Christmas is time, 
coming up or Halloween and I haven't planned far enough ahead of time or I can't remember what everybody wants. Well, this could be a solution that handles all that together and, and gives you answers or concepts in addition to what I've already recorded for those individuals. Now, this is a pretty extensive app, but if this is done really well, and by Becca is the one that produced it. As you can imagine, they are certainly a go-to place to get those gifts, uh, and it's a great way for them to also collect data on who is their direct target market. As for other avenues of marketing, which may be through social media, when you have social media logins, or through email. Yeah, I think you have a good point there with the um, not being quite like Frank and Oak. I, I remember when I was looking at it, I was kind of thinking like, I'm not sure that would really work so well, but come up with other ideas. I was getting a little bit iffy, but I really liked what you put forth there, Marguerite. I think that could be really helpful. If knowing a bit more about the business from our previous webinars, if I was really, you know, Rebecca, I would really have to think carefully to prioritize, you know, between possibly dressing up the website and mobile website a bit more than it is or going the app avenue. And that's a bit of general marketing strategy. It really has to be thought through and maybe do some research on what your clients think and that kind of thing to really decide what's the best thing to prioritize on. Well, great. I think we have covered quite a bit of information and can you believe it, our hour is up. So I know we have a couple of things we want to make sure people know that they can get as resources from us and then I think we're going to call it a day. All right. Well, some extra resources and we're going to send this whole um, side share presentation out to uh, attendees. So you'll be able to click on these and go right to the pages. But for Clark, we have a how to make mobile friendly marketing ebook. It's free and teach you the difference between mobile compatible and mobile optimized websites. It goes over again the difference between native apps and HTML apps or web apps are the same thing. It talks about choosing whether you're best off doing that ebook. She didn't really talk about it. it's a not technically an app, but it's kind of an app like thing. And it talks about ebooks a bit versus doing an app, you know, which is better how to choose, you know, do I want to publish to the iBook store or do I want to have my own dedicated standalone app. It walks you through that and gives you some ideas what you need to do and consider. And uh, from Relaunch U, we have uh, with a number of different items, but in this one in particular, a popular, the most popular ebook is the 30 Greatest Lead Generation Tips, Tricks, and Ideas, specifically designed for your website. And uh, it breaks it right down. The steps that you take to make that conversion path to capture email information and the names of people who are visiting your website so then you can communicate with them via email and build a relationship. So uh, thank you so much for your time today, Andrew. This was lots of fun. I appreciate everybody that came here to participate in this webinar. We're going to do it again on Thursday, and we've got a lot more people coming, so I'm looking forward to that. And I just want to wish everyone the best in business. Enjoy your week. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming.